Your Honor, I would like to do my opening statement. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have before you today is a set of unusual but factual circumstances in the case of my client, Jesus the Christ. The man on trial here is unlike any other natural man. We, the defense, will present evidence unlike anything you've ever heard. The facts will astound you. The very evidence of Jesus alone is unprecedented. There has never been, nor will there ever be, a man to walk the face of the earth like Jesus the Christ. Don't be misguided by the information that the prosecution will try to present. It's false, misleading, and simply not true. The man, Jesus, he's humble, has not broken a single crime, has not broken a single law. But the prosecution will try to present that he's a radical and a revolutionary and has come to disrupt the religious and political status quo. We, the defense, will present evidence that is the truth, the whole truth, for God is our help. This man on trial, the prosecution, they say that he is full of trouble. Well, when we're done, we will present evidence that is that will leave you with no doubt that this man is Lord and Savior of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I have but one thing to ask, that you try not this case in your minds, but in your hearts and in your souls. But therein lies the real truth. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further statements. Good morning, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the prosecution, and you've heard lots of compliments given to me by the defense. So I'm going to go into my closing statements. In this trial, you've heard a lot of things about Jesus Christ. I'm not here to argue if this is a good man or a bad man. I'm not here to argue if he did kind, kind acts towards human beings. We're here in a courtroom discussing facts. I see some of you don't want to look at me. Can't even bear to look at me because I'm the prosecution for your savior. Right? This is a courtroom, ladies and gentlemen. This is about simple, simple facts. I'm going to get into a couple stories, but first I want to start off by, by uh, reading to you a couple things here. <clears throat> the Messiah. Who knows what the Messiah means? Yeah, the, anointed. the anointed one. Yeah. Okay, very good. It says that when the true Messiah comes, these are the things that must happen, that will happen. One, he will build the third temple. That's in Ezekiel. Two, he will gather all Jews back to the land of Israel. Three, he will usher in an era of world peace. World peace. We will not raise swords against each other. Nations will not fight amongst nations. And four, he will spread universal knowledge of God and of Israel. We will unite in humanity via race, creed, color. All men are equal. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you today, is that the case? Are all men equal? Are there not wars going on? 
senseless lives being lost. If this was truly the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, would we not have peace? I'm going to tell you three stories. Bear with me. And I am not comparing these people to Jesus. They're just stories. Who, who in this room believes uh, they're good people? They believe in love, faith. They believe. Raise your hand if you believe. If you believe that you will do good in life. If you believe in positivity, positivity of man and that good things could, could become. If you all believe that. Okay, good. So here's three stories. One, if you've heard it, just bear with me. One is about a sick lion. A man's walking through the jungle. He stumbles upon a sick lion who's dying. He's hurt. He's meek. <coughs> so the man's hesitant to step up to this lion. It's a lion. But he decides, because he's a man of faith, he decides he's going to help this lion, which he does. Mm -hmm. He wraps his arm around the lion. He nurtures him. He feeds him. He brings this lion back to health. He gets him strong again. Mm -hmm. So one day, he's smiling at the lion, and he's happy for what he's done. Mm -hmm. And the lion bites him. <laughs> the lion bites him. Yeah. And as he's dying, he looks up at the lion, and the lion has blood on it. And he says, why would you bite me? And he says, man, you knew I was a lion when you helped me. <laughs> Another story. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to call this story the average Joe. Average Joe was a, was a good, good kid, grew up in a good home. But he developed a, a, what I call a disease. This is a disease of addiction. Joe got addicted to drugs. And Joe could, could not fight this addiction or this quench and this thirst. And Joe would do things. He would steal from people he loved. How many of you know Joe's? He would steal from people he loved. He would lie to people he loved. He would do anything he had to do to get a fix. Right? But guess what? Joe's mother... She put up with it over and over again because she loved her child. How many of you would put up with senseless things for your child? Because you love your child. That's the second story. The third story is going to be quick. It's about this young man who grew up oppressed. Oppressed by Western culture. Oppressed by, by financial uh, strain on his countrymen. And, and not being able to believe in what he believed. This man ended up rising through the ranks and became a great businessman. Did great business with our country, with America. He made lots of money. And he got his people to rally behind him and follow behind him because he made them believe and he spoke that they were just as good as any and they should be able to believe in the God of their choice, which he called Allah. And he was a peaceful man for a long time. This man later manufactured, planned, and did one of the biggest attacks on American soil. His name was Bin Laden. Bin Laden with the will and the belief that he can do, because he believed in something like all of you believe. You said in the beginning you believe. You raised your hand. You believe that you can do. Well, he believed, and he did. He brought tragedy and chaos. Now, I am not comparing Jesus Christ to any of these people, but here's my question. <coughs> Is Jesus Christ truly the Son of Man? Yes. The Messiah. God. Or is it possible that he's just an average Joe? He's nope. that mother. You're believers. I don't question that. But this is a courtroom. I need facts. And the facts are this. None of the prophecies have been fulfilled as of yet. And when we go back in time, not today, when there's a New Testament, not today in your belief, we're back in the courtroom of the days of Jesus Christ, when all of us were Jews, and all of us believed in the Old Testament. So you've got to ask yourself, on that day, that very day, is he the Son of God? Has he fulfilled all prophecies? You don't have to answer to me. I would not want to be in your shoes. I thank you for your time, but I want you to go home today and really think about where you stand. Thank you.